excused Cause you're always late over waiting totally rude Honey Welcome to the Creatively Unworthy uh, dog cast show um, I'm Kristen And I'm Larry, her father And I'm Rebecca uh, And with us This is our guest with us tonight is Joe Trozera from North Hollywood. Yeah, let's just call it that. North Hollywood is fine. North Hollywood. 91607. And he is a creative in many facets. Um, and we'll, we'll hear about those in a bit. But I want to throw to Dad for our topic for tonight. What's and our topic? The theme for this uh, podcast is suffering. And not, not, not just everyday well yeah everyday suffering that the artist goes through i'll just try to explain that the artist goes through to follow their craft in other words i've been i i've made my life as an art as a writer and as a painter you know for my whole life but there's a there's a certain suffering that goes along with that and it means that sometimes nobody buys what i write or there'll be a dry spill, or there'll be whatever. It's not like working down at Macy's or, you know, working as an accountant where you've always got that that job. Now, the difference is when you're an artist, where you kind of make up for that suffering is you get to be, do what you really want to do, which is creating. So that's, so that's what I want to talk about is that we want to, we want to enter, we want to, talk to Joe about his life, but also kind of relating to this concept of suffering and then how to deal with it. Yeah. So just to add to what you just said, um, this podcast um, is a safe place to share with and arm fellow creatives with a toolkit for navigating life as a creative human. Um, because if you're creative, even a teeny tiny bit, you get, chances are you have definitely felt unworthy AKA suffered uh, internally. And um, just for all the people that work out at Macy's, I used to work at Macy's and there's a lot of suffering going on there. I'll tell you that, especially in the men's department, but it's different, it's different kind of department. suffering. Yeah. Um, so why don't you, um, dad, give us an example uh, from this week or last week or whenever. Uh, well, I can give it to you right now. Okay. Um, the suffering that I'm going through is that I can't get back to Cambodia. It's really locked down. And there's, um, there's, you've got to put up $2,000 that, you know, in the bank when you go, I mean, there's a whole bunch of different things, but my suffering is by coming, I've been gone for 10 years and I've been doing what I thought was really helpful to the people. And I, I got to sort of, I got to write, do my art, do my yoga, and also help the people of Cambodia, which is part of my my life's my purpose and my mission. Come back here, and because I don't own a house anymore, I've owned lots of houses, but because I don't own a house, I've had to find a place to rent. I had to buy a car. I had to get into debt. I had to get all of these things, which just stretches the dollars that I have because I'm still helping the family in Cambodia. But then I look at myself like you idiot, you know, you, you're, you know, or I'll, I'll, re, I'll, I'll walk by some house that I could have bought so easily 15 or 20 years ago. And today I can't do it. You know, I don't have the extra money to buy it. I don't. And then I, I, I so that's what I mean by the suffering. It's sort of a self-imposed, if you let it, like I'm not good enough. And this is, goes back to this unworthy part of it but it's it's this um internal voice that sort of is in the background going well asshole you should have should have stayed doing what you were doing you know you had to go run off and help some bunch of people that probably won't ever care or know or whatever you know this is what and i have to just tell the voice to shut up you know it's we talk about a lot about the internal voice that the that all of us have, but the artist especially, because we look around and it's really easy to see friends that have thrown in the towel. They aren't doing what they love, but they sure making a lot of money doing 
you know, what, what they've been doing for the last 40 years. But, you know, inside they may be this, well, first of all, an artist wouldn't do it. They, they would figure some way to do their craft. And unfortunately, art, singing, uh, music, it's a zero sum game. And what I mean by that is there's, it's like either you, it seems like either you make it really big or there's nothing. You know, it's very, um, it's very difficult to live a creative life, a purely creative life. It's really, really difficult. And that comes with the suffering that I'm talking about. And I think this is the perfect place to add um, our little spiel uh, that we talked about a couple days ago. This is um, something that came to me the other night while I was sitting out on my porch. And it basically like just started talking to me. I don't hear voices or anything, but this one came in and it was basically like, welcome to earth. Couple things. First, since you're a human, uh, feeling unworthy is part of the deal, uh, which is why we're here for you in this. We've created this little safe space, um, whoever you may be. And hopefully we'll provide some examples on how you can thrive instead of merely surviving or getting used to it. Uh, it being the impending doom and constant inner voice that says, sorry, you're not good enough. Please try again later, loser. You know, um, we exist to lighten the mental load of simply being born with even the slightest creative bone in your body. So whether you are making art or um, coming up with a creative way to staff your show or um, building something like, yeah. You're not alone. Everyone has that moment of, oh, I'm, for example, my art, like when I do a drawing, that internal voice goes, this is what you've spent three months on? This? Yeah. Really, Kristen? You think this is, oh, God. And it's just like internal, internal. No one else is telling me, Kristen, stop drawing because it sucks. No one is saying that. I'm the only one saying it for some reason. It's insane. It's insanity. Um, and I, I know, Joe, you know, you you do a lot of things. You, you fish, you travel, you like adventures, but you also manage gigantic number of people at work. And, and that takes some creativity. That takes um, both farmer and hunter brain because you got to worry about scheduling and logistics and personalities and how to communicate, all of it. Um, that's what Joe, I'll let Joe tell you a little bit more, but. I, I could, I could tell you. So I'm Joe Chazera. I'm, I've been a line producer on the show called Naked and Afraid for about uh, four years. Um, and, you know, most people don't really know what a line producer is. It's a very distinct job. There's usually generally one of them per show. Um, sometimes they're called UPMs, um, but you're in charge of the budget. You're overseeing all the hiring you're overseeing the scheduling, you know, but it is a team effort. It, we're all joined together to produce one product. And that's that TV show that everybody loves and adores. Um, but, you know, like Kristen was saying, it's like, there's so many people, there's so many moving parts and I have to creatively, you know, hear from here over here, somebody telling me something, someone over here, and you're just all trying to work. And, and right now we have a, the, one of the most difficult times, the business is so booming for whatever reason. Um, I've never, ex I, yeah, I've been in the business for 20 years and I've never experienced so many shows, television shows, films, whatever it is, filming all at the same time. So now we're really getting into a creative dynamic is we have to find and not hurt other shows, you know, with camera operators, um, you know, assistant cameras, uh, directors, um, showrunners, producers. It's crazy right now. Is that because you pull from one company all the people you need and you share them and get across multiple shows? Well, you know, as a company, you know, the companies Renegade 83 and, and as as a company, they, they like their people, right? They like to use some of the similar people. They know their work. They know their work. But at some point, 
that guy's busy on a different show. Um, but it's the entire industry. You can, you know, I, I know a guy, Lance Jeffries, he, he's a camera op, a really good DP out there. He, he jumps from different production companies and, and he's probably booked up for the next three months. And, you know, and, and you might want to use them. Um, the art firm with Naked and Afraid, though, is like we need very specific artists. They need to also be able to trek into the wild and jungles and carry lots of heavy stuff down a rain, <laughs> uh, a rain, uh, let's say a muddy walk path or something like that, and, and mm -hmm. slip and fall and, and through creeks and rivers while carrying all your equipment. You covered know? with insects. Yeah. And covered in insects and ants and, and spiders. and Probably uh, the documentary guys, too, but do that. Yeah, yep. um, but it's a National faster. I, 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 I think it's a little faster pace because you, you do have you have 12 hours to get in and out. You don't get the freedom of just like, all right, let's watch the yeah. animal. Get a good shot. Um, yeah, they do. They do some of that, too. Um, and, you know, and I'm not out there every day watching those guys. And But, you know, you know, the suffering that I have is is you have all the stress from everybody coming at you. And, um, you know, I'll hear it from, from some of my subordinates. I'll hear it from the higher ups, you know, there's pressure any given moment. And so you're, you know, just like you said, are you good enough to do this job? There's, there's points and times where you're just like, so overwhelmed and, and, and I think, you know, that suffering for me, at least it builds me up. Okay. What did I do wrong mm -hmm. now? And, and maybe there isn't nothing I'm doing wrong, but, you know, in my mind, right, I'm doing something wrong. How do I learn from this moment in time to better myself the next time it happens? And a lot of times in TV, you would get one chance at a lot of these things and, and just one take, you know, you, you have some of that. And, you know, so you don't always get to experience the same thing over and over so you can learn from. But, you know, I try to do my best and, and get there. But, you know, I do at times go, am I good enough to do the show anymore? And if I wasn't, they wouldn't put me in that role. So in the end of the day, realizing, you know, what other people think is never what you think. You're always your own worst critic. That, that you brought up the suffering, I mean, the uh, uh, stress, you know, and stress creates suffering. And, and let me just kind of, expand for me the suffering how, how i deal with it how i deal with it is by having a purpose bigger than myself and that is six kids and a woman that i support in cambodia i take care of them i send them to school i take i buy their food i i i keep them safe their housing everything so that's a purpose and 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 it allows uh, anytime i'm going oh poor me you know, I don't have enough money to buy a house. You know, it's like, yeah, but I'm sending, you know, six girls to school yeah. in another country, you know, and this is going to make a tremendous difference in the future. I mean, one of them wants to be a it's going to law school now. What? This was a people that were living on the street 10 years ago when I met so Pete, they had nothing. And now the one of the daughter, one of the daughters wants to go or is going to law school. It was in her second year. That is and absolutely mind-blowing. Mind-blowing, right? And it's it's the little thing I could do. But I have to kind of recreate that. You know, you're right now, you're in your you're in the years that I, you know, I have to look like 30 years ago to be where, you know, your age and what you're doing. And I did, I was oblivious to all this. I just had my head down, stress will build me up, you know, and I had all that conversation. But you'll get at one time in your life, you'll get to this point, you'll go, hey, is this worth it? You know, is this all worth it? So you got to create a purpose or you've got to find a purpose and a purpose gives your life meaning. And so that's how I deal with whatever suffering is in my life, which is, you know, nothing compared to what some people go through. And some people will use comparison and that's not the best thing to do because you know, your mind will compare, you know, that's when I, when I said, well, I look at my friends that have, you know, multi-million dollar houses and big, bank accounts and they could go anywhere, you know, I, I, you can't, I don't want to go comparing there, you know, cause I'm comparing myself to my farmer friends that have just, and if they were really honest and truthful with me, they would probably say, yeah, I've really, you know, 
I, I hate what I do, but I just suffer through happy. it. Yeah. Huh? The, one, the one I'm thinking of is definitely not happy. <laughs> he's just yeah. kind of existing. But even if you look at um, that poor guy, well, he wasn't poor. He was the man that got to travel around the world and have the best dinners with the most. Oh, Anthony people. Bordeaux. Anthony. He yeah. appeared to have it all. And yeah. He killed himself. Like, he, he, no he, one is. That's safe throwing everybody off. Nobody themselves. can stand it except he had no meaning. He must not, He obviously. There wasn't anything no above himself. It was his focus was on himself, is what I'm yeah. you know, entertaining of. Is but if somebody you know like Schindler and Schindler's List, this guy was in you know Nazi germ. You know he could have been executed for what he was doing, helping Jews. Oh my God, you know what? Or 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 would you really have the guts to hide some Jews under your porch? And risk your whole family being executed by Nazis. I mean, a lot of people yeah. would, wouldn't do that. They they couldn't do it. So there's different that's purposes. That's what I mean by a purpose. There's got to be people. You know, a huge. Mm -hmm. You know, and what I try to remind myself is is my purpose every day. If I forget yeah. it, life sucks, and I go back to I'm unworthy and compare myself. Yeah, yeah. it's very. Um, it's not on purpose. It's not like we're trying to be selfish, but it's really easy to think about yourself. We're human beings. And it's not how human. to help for the greater good, mm -hmm. um, which is something I think Joe does uh, is basically keeps the, the whole thing going. Like uh, there's so many different balls in the air that he's got to keep up in the air and keep everyone happy through this whole long period of time. We, we like to call them plates. Plates. Yeah, spend a lot of sure. plate. yeah. <laughs> exactly. That's even more tricky because you get only so many fingers to hold the plates. And what do you what do you do for yourself to entertain for fun? Yeah, um, I hang out with Kristen a lot. That that's definitely one of my you know highlights. Of, you uh -huh. know, Great highlights of, of of my week sometimes. Too. You know, um, you know, Me you too. I I fish. <laughs> that that's one of my major outlets. I go out. I bought a boat during COVID. Mm. And I've always loved to fish. I, I like the competition of it. Um, it's a journey. It's a mystery. It's a puzzle. Um, and it, it, it totally takes my mindset off of work. Mm. Like anything of that. And it is very creative, too. Very like creative. like yeah. you would never realize just picking up a rod and a reel and throwing it out there. Oh, is this creative? But there's a pattern. There's 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 a method to all this madness. There's it's a process. There's, there's learning, and and when I get involved in that that learning, the YouTube videos on fishing, the you know the reading of documents, studying, and then actually executing those plans, you know it it's huge, you know, and the suffering for that is probably just you know maybe failing at a competition. I I didn't get the biggest fish. I didn't get any fish one day, you know, and and when you're you're out there, you know, spending a couple hundred bucks. To compete against guys you you want to be on top and you know you don't always get on top but you go back out there and learn again and try it it's kind of my my major outlet would be i would say fishing mm -hmm. and then hanging out with friends and and just learning just growing and self-improvement it's all always about self i love self that. A lot of that and Joe was also the trike night winner before the pandemic started. Every, what was it, Wednesday night? So uh, for all Great the night. audience members that don't know this, uh, there's a, a local bar in, I think it's Studio City technically, uh, called Thirsty Merchant. And every Wednesday night, happened to go with one of my producer friends. We went to go have a drink. And they were, they're like some MC comes out and it's like, are you ready for drag night? We're like, what is that? Um, sign up, they go around. And what it was is you would you would sit on a tricycle at the start and then and ride don't. around the bar don't and then you have to pound a pint uh, beer and the fastest time would win a gift card. And that fir very first moment, I ended up getting third. And I was like, whoa, I'm actually good at this. I think the next time I came back, I got first. And then, and then he you know, proceeded, cool. to hold proceeded to have like 20, 20 for the whole year. <laughs> it, the whole year he won every single night. 
and I would invite my friends to come see me and, and participate. Oh my God. It was it was so great, and then COVID hit, and then all that. You know, it's just to it, ruin it, everything, it, man. I mean, freaking even trike night. So right. So I keep going back every Wednesday. So I've gone three weeks now since we've kind of reopened our world, which it might not quite be reopened. And you still you know, have your champion title. I I don't know if the very last one did I win. I feel like I did. You did. Yeah. How many shots uh, did you take on the trike? Is not. But I, uh, there was one more trike night that right before COVID hit that I didn't participate in. And so I, I decided, you know, it's too close. Oh, there's some weird virus out there. So, but in my mind, yes. That's, yeah. that's one of the other fun things he does to, to release the pressure of that stressful, exciting job. Correct. Uh, fishing. Mm-hmm. Camping, track night, champion. I like that. Those, those are all good things to do. And before yeah. we get too far away, I wanted to say um, what you were saying, Larry, about comparing yourself to other people and how you try not to. I heard, even though it's kind of cheesy, one of those motivational things, but somebody said, uh, don't compare yourself to other people. Compare yourself to who you were um, in the past because you have all your advantages and disadvantages. Jordan Peterson That's said good. That. Yes, he did. I didn't want to. Oh, I, I love, love how you recognize that. Thing. <laughs> yeah, he, what he what he meant what he was saying was instead of comparing yourself to you know like the other producer or whatever, mm-hmm. every you should look at what am I doing today that I'm just a little bit better at than I was yesterday. Mm-hmm. Just and sometimes you might even have to get what am I doing this hour that's <laughs> you know if the voice is really yeah. loud. Yeah. That I'm, you know, not doing, you know, and um, that's a big one. That's one I have to constantly remember. Yeah. Because I wake up and I forget all of this stuff and I've read everything. I know this (laughs) stuff by heart and I can't even remember, you know, to put my eye drops in and, oh yeah, I got to do that. You know, it's just like I wake up in this, oh my God, I wake up in this fog of, now what am I going to do? You know, because I don't have a job that I go to, so I have to constantly recreate what the hell am I doing today? Yeah. In this strange country called America, which I strange. I, I, like, I, you were I, born I, here, Larry. You're an American. I've been thrust <laughs> back into a world that makes no sense. You can't believe how much this place has changed. By the way, along with what you you know, since we're talking about Hollywood, my new favorite. Um, ongoing um, sitcom is Entourage. And I like it for a lot of reasons, but the, one of the you reasons I like the most- Naked and Afraid, Larry. Is, what? <laughs> you said you mean like, Naked and Afraid. <laughs> Throwing no, naked uh, and afraid Joseph of no, Here's the reason why it's I like Entourage. your favorite show. The, there what, you go. I, <laughs> no, no, I'm making it- yeah. I'm going to lose my thought, trend of yeah, thought. Sorry, go, go on, go on, go on. I'm okay. sorry. What is good about Entourage is it's about a group of people that constantly fail and then succeed and fail and succeed and fail and succeed. And you get to watch the way these people react to their success and to their failures. And it's amazing. I mean, if you, you know, there's the entertainment value and people watch it for the whatever, but I watch it for the reaction. Because the writer has just done this incredible job of laying out several lives in in their reaction to life, you know, it, big mm-hmm. big time life. I mean, not all of us is going to get a, you know, make twenty million dollars on a movie. That's like once in a million, mm-hmm. but that's only one guy. You know, there's the other guys that are the kind of the the entourage and their normal lives and what's going on, mm-hmm. and it is. I recommend it as something, you know, that has redeeming value not just you know not just entertainment but just to see down. the reactions what'd you say i'll Rebecca? write that down um, yeah, it's called entourage you're familiar with that joe have you seen it yeah, yeah. i used to watch that that show um back in i it, probably good good time to restart a binge but you know i have been trying to do other things than just watch TV these days. Well, I've got more free time than you do. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit. A little bit. The weird thing about having too much free time, though, is like, 
I know I just started summer, right? Well, not started it because I've been in summer. I've already lost track of time. But it's been COVID and we're trapped inside. And you think as an artist, all I've ever wanted was to have all this time in the world to do anything. And then you get all the time in the world. And it's like, now you're yeah. waking up at noon, you're rolling out of bed, you don't have any new ideas. Yeah. It's like, I don't know. Well, you brought up an excellent point. Because the less, like I've always found, I, I've written a bunch of books in my past life. And I, there's a whole system to it. But what I found is my motivation comes once I get that contract signed. I mean, I can finish that book in no time. But if I've got all the time in the world, uh, it's hard. You know, it's hard to even uh -huh. get back to it. But when you've got a deadline, you know, in a way, I appreciate what Joe's going through, you know, in what he's got to do because he's got constant deadlines. So you're, you know, looking for escapes. Yeah where you can get away. Well, I'm living in the get away. You know, I've got, I'm away. I got away. And it's freaking really hard. See, it's life. There's no getting, there's no getting away from it. Yeah. You know, you might be the most successful guy in the world and you have all this money and free time and you sit around going like, uh, what am I going to do now? That's the thing about having like, I don't know, luxury. Like, I feel like I'm a very privileged person like I live in a very nice place and I have all this time now that I'm not in school and stuff and it's like if you have everything where's the motivation coming from to be creative and do all this other stuff because it's like well like everybody I know already likes the creative things that I already do and I don't really need all these other people and I guess I could do this today but I could also do it tomorrow and it almost feels like no matter what you do nothing's going to change per se and you already have everything you need so you don't have this driving force saying like hey you should do this today because you know you're not going to have any time tomorrow it's like well you'll have all the time all day long and you yeah, know why we why yeah. people procrastinate what? you know why you procrastinate because there's yes. no dopamine in it you got it but yeah dopamine but the best time i've ever felt writing is when i had a really big essay due the other day and I'd write something not related to the essay it's like the biggest high you're like yeah like I'm sneaking out of writing this five page paper so I can go write about a dragon or something yeah this is really cool and it's like well I could be doing that right now but it's like yeah but I could sit on the couch and watch tv and I can maybe do that tomorrow because what difference would it make and it's like no that sounds like rough <laughs> but yeah no, I agree. It's my really long way of saying I agree. Joe, we talk about dopamine. We just sort of went past it. But dopamine is, you know, as you know, is what opens up the prefrontal cortex and allows you to think. And those of us creative types need a lot, a lot of dopamine. And anytime you get bored, anytime things aren't go, that's why you go exercise. That's why you go fishing. It creates, do that's why, of course, Every your night. fishing isn't just to go catch a fish. You're in competition. Mm -hmm. Dopamine. You know, all it's those things cute. create dopamine. Mm -hmm. it, 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 it's a dopamine and a, a block from, like, I don't have to think about that. But, you know, I do, you know, there's been times where I'm, like, out there doing a tournament. And I have to check my email because something's going on in, in Africa or, or like, in, like, South Africa. And you're like, oh. I deal with that real quick. That's okay. But doesn't it kind of make fishing more exciting that you there's more pressing things in Africa, but you've got to catch this big one? Yeah. I've had a couple of, of those moments that you're just like, you know, and and it is really you need to block out things for eight hours. It's, it is a work, and 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 it like everything is dopamine. You know, the the stress level that you get um, when things are coming crashing down, but you're like you work through it. And, and with those, and it's all a big high in, in our heads. And did they yeah. teach you any of this stuff in college when you went to school about how to deal with what you're doing? The stress? Me? Um, I'm back in college, I said, it feels so long ago. I graduated in 2002. 2002, um, dang. <laughs> dang. That's not too long. That's not too long. I mean, like, usually people. Almost college. 20 years out of college. Um, you know. Oh, I I, mean, I graduated in 72, so go screw yourself. Okay. Even, even further away. I graduated high school in 15. That's close to that. Oh, God. 
Yeah. Two thousand. Yeah. But it's you know it you know it was a lot of that procrastination. I hunkered down like with a you know night before I had to turn mm -hmm. in this essay and and or or anything mm -hmm. papers studying is always the same. It's like let me go have fun and and I always wondered why I couldn't just like in long I have a week and why can't I just you can't sit there and. Get at the computer and just start. I'm like, all right, let me go. Oh, there's a TV show. Oh, my buddies are having uh, <laughs> drinks, you know, at the local pub. Oh, that sounds like fun. What wow. I was also getting to is they don't teach you the things that we're talking about. We're taught the wrong rules. Yeah. And, and by that, I mean, like, there's a really one of the best books on writing I've ever found. It's called Writers Without Teachers. And I'll go pick it up and get the guy's name. But this guy has been a teacher for, you know, 30 or 40 years. And he he may, he may noticed certain things about, you know, uh, this is kind of a Jordan Peterson except for writers. He noticed that all of the things that the teachers were telling you to do don't teach you how to write, how to become a, you know, a writer. Yeah. Like if you and wanted I'm to like, write a book or a screenplay or like. I don't know, an argument like, to your city council about why they shouldn't have blue hedges out in front of the thing. Like, well, more, no more, practical writing. Well, it's just format, right? That's well, all they teach you, format. Well, yeah. there was one thing. For that, essays. And what's Rebecca, that good for? Writing more essays when you get to college. Rebecca, let me just. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Rebecca said she started writing one thing and then she started writing something else. And he said, you know, this is, a, 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 you know, you, you're not allowed to do that. And, you know, writing teachers say you need to focus and only work on one project, which is bullshit. What she did is what creative people do. You know, you'll start writing one thing and you'll lead to something else and do it. You know, the rules say don't do it. What this guy said was some of the best writing that he's found comes out of people that skip around. I mean, I have to, I've got three books going at the same time, plus a screenplay, plus an art project. We, and all of that is, creates dopamine. So that's, sorry to be harsh on you, interrupt you, Rebecca, but that's No, I'm, I'm interrupting you, so I don't feel bad. This I is feel exactly well, I posted, I don't know if you can read that. I don't it says, yeah. Adulting is hard, especially if you do it the way you're told. Break the mold you are told. Like, that's, I just put that, posted that like yesterday. This is exactly what I was thinking about yesterday. Did you yesterday. post that on Instagram, by the way? Because I think I saw that. I, it, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know how to like stories, but I liked it in my heart. I was like, oh, that's, that's good. Though. Hey, Larry, you brought up a good point. What did I learn this in school? You know, there, no, like not indirectly. Yeah, but what I did way. learn how to do in school was figure things out, right? Mm -hmm. I here's a, here's a task, and you got to go figure it out. And same thing with your suffering. Nowadays, I, you brought up back then, like you know, thirty years ago, you didn't have technology. You didn't have you had to go to the library and read a book, or or somehow yeah. ask a friend who read this book. It was the only way. But now we have so many reviews. I can look at this. I can learn. Um, it's easier to access these things to help through your suffering and learn from them. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what I was taught in school. It was how to figure things out. So when I go into suffering, I can read a book by so-and-so who talks about stress levels or, you know, how, how, how to deal with, uh, I think there's a, I wish I remembered the book, but like how to do deal with awful employees. You know, there's, there's some people that are just downright mean and cruel and, but you have to work with them. They have a job. You can't fire them. Yeah. Can we? Yeah, in my day, it was called <laughs> we, execution. Can we? Was... Well, nowadays, there's these labor laws, and they yeah. protect people they protect very me. well. <laughs> if they didn't protect, you might be fired, but you can go back and sue for, you know, a million dollars. And well, you're, you, the technology is, it's now, I mean, it's, literally out of control it's you know the, the digital world i mean i've seen this just in the last 10 years just mm -hmm. skyrocket in the last 10 years you know what's really interesting if you look at wars 
and you look at the communication in wars. I was just watching a movie about General Patton by George Marshall. He won an Academy Award. So there's this 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 wire that they've got to get from Washington to the to Sicily, and he goes, "Go ahead and tell them that I'm going to do this. It'll take them a day and a half before they get it." And I just thought, "Wow! I mean that <coughs> that was the time that it took to get." communication. And if you go back further, back to when George Washington was, you know, fighting the British, you know, it Dang. took months. And if, you know, World, World War, you know, like a lot of people, um, we, we were, none of us were born then, but if you look at World War One or World War Two, there were, um, it would literally take 30 days before you got news of the front. Now, you watch it on CNN, there's a embedded things with, you yeah. know, with everything. So that information is coming at you so fast. And one of the things that I've done as my, one of my um, mantras, I guess would be is simplicity. I keep trying to find the simplest way to do things. If you don't, you get lost in complexity and complexity is this, where the suffering lives is in complexity. I agree with that. Simplicity Nothing is, beats a pen and a piece of paper when you're really, really stressed out and you just need to, like, whatever you need to do. Rod. What's more simple? Fish than rod, fish. yeah. You know, like to our roots. Roots. Oh, it's way more yeah. complicated. Than oh. than we, I mean, Literally. it can be easy. Throw a piece of bait on a, a hook. It does work. I've done it many a times. You, you catch a live fish and you throw it on a hook and it's a line, a hook and a line and a fish, and then you catch mm -hmm. a big six-pounder. Yeah. Right, and it's good to remember how to. Do. When I was a little kid, I made a crystal set, and you could make, and I can still make a crystal set and pick up radio, radio AM radio waves, low frequency waves. And if I told you how you made it, you would it'd blow your mind. But I could make it for the diode. I would use a double-edged razor blade and a pin, and I can, and I can run that pin on that razor blade like a diode. I mean, who would? You don't want to forget these very simplistic things because one day when there's the big meltdown and it always is like we think the pandemic was the big pending. wait till there's an implosion Power of all goes up. digital stuff. Jim, Jim James sings a song called The Power's Going Out and it's yeah. so good. And I'm like, I know someday it's going to go. That's why I hold on to my VHSs. Like, like I could use power. Like, I'd still need power for a VHS. Hello. Hello. Like, you almost need to go back to the candle days with, like, a piece of glass, put the negative on the candle. Because once the power grid goes, you can't plug anything in, Kristen. Why do you have so many old machines? I'm like, someday. Well, the phone. Come in handy the, again. Example is a telephone, a regular old-fashioned rotary phone. If you could lose... All your cell, you can lose everything, but oh. it, the phone can work without electricity. You know, you use a dial tone. And I change. started saving my big tin cans because I want to do an old school phone, like with the with the yarn. Yeah. You drill a hole in the cans, and you have your best friend's got one in her house, and it's strung across tree branches to your room. You get about You're sixty like, oh, feet oh. of losing effectiveness after sixty feet. Mm -hmm. of does it work? I don't know. I don't know. I, I, get, I haven't tried fun. it yet. But it's fun. And just in case, I mean. <laughs> and if you want to get rich, look for ways to simplify things. I mean, almost everybody that's gotten super rich, super fast, figured out a way to make it better, faster, easier, or whatever. You know, so simplicity as a goal is not bad. Yeah. There's one. Speaking of simplicity, Joe, I know you've done a lot of self transformation and, and a lot of work on yourself over the last four or five, six years. I don't know the timeline exactly. Um, what would you say is one of the, the best winning formulas that you've learned so far so that we maybe someone listening could um, learn from some of the things that you've focused on? The self-help part that it, it, ends up helping others in the long run. I think what a lot of us suffer through is, is it, it's, it's, it's all about fear. It's fear mm. of everything. Like that's, that's the, the, the thing that we have to overcome. Like successful people overcome a lot of their fears and, and 
and and it, it's challenging and it's something that you have to look at what is it that i'm afraid of is this person like is am i afraid to ask for a raise like do i deserve a raise mm-hmm. and a lot of us don't ask for a raise because we're, we're like no nah, we don't it's not fine or what would our boss say when we ask for that um it's really pounding those i i, I can say I, I learned a lot about dating. I've been single for a couple of years now. And, and, and part of it is just, you know, there's an approach to, to people. You have to talk to them. So like someone, everybody's very friendly if you learn to actually talk to them. But like in our heads, we're in our heads. So we don't talk to people. We just kind of shy away um, from it. But it, it, it's all about fear. And the more you do things, the less fear becomes. And again, your dopamine hits are hitting striving because you're accomplishing. Um, you're, you're slowly going away from fear. And I, I think that's the, the biggest thing that I've, I've learned over the past year is, is we all have to work on what we're afraid of. Let, let, me, let me interject something about fear because fear is something that I know a little bit about. Um, no. <laughs> um, you're going to have fear. And it's not that you can necessarily overcome fear. It's that you've got to put fear in its place. Like they'll say, you know, hero is somebody that, you know, faces like the, the, whatever the situation is, feels the fear and still moves forward. So it's not like you can, oh, you know, Joe is so great. He has no fear. No, Joe has fear, but you, you, you're able to manage the fear. Actually, I've got a rule when things are, when, if I'm afraid to call somebody, I call them. Because I know, why am I afraid to call them? Afraid of failure, right? Well, I'm not, I failed by not calling them. So fear to me, I've turned it around where I've made fear is kind of a tool that I'll use, like simplicity. I like okay. that. So the other night, we, okay. Have you ever listened to the Star Spangled Banner? Like really listen to it. I did, I've listened to it a million times, but the other day, on 4th of July, I listened to it with my heart. And the last verse is, um, and the home of the brave, right? Yeah. And it's like, holy crap, it sunk in how brave those people were for for uh, future generations. Like, how selfless is that? Like, going out and making sure that your grandkids' grandkids are still going to have a place to, like this country is founded on being brave because everyone has fear. Everyone, no matter the toughest generals and blah, blah, blahs. It's like a universal thing, which is kind of comforting knowing that we're not alone. Um, you know, one of the I, rules in, in, in combat, one of the first rules, do something like mm-hmm. if you get into an ambush, don't just sit there. <laughs> you do something. It doesn't matter if it's right, left, it doesn't matter if it's a wrong move, but you've got to do something in that situation. And a lot of people will freeze up and you quickly find out the ones that freeze up, you make sure they're not the first guy. <laughs> yeah. Them, you know, Hang out in the back, check. buddy, for a bit. Um, we need some sandwiches wrapped. Can you go back there for now? Yeah, go make sure those sandwiches are nice and wrapped. And this yeah. is this is what life is. It, it, you know, like we're not in combat all the time. But in a way, life is combat. I mean, you're you're com- you're in combat with, and you've got well, a company of men. It's a battlefield. A company of men and women that you're a commander of, you know, and it, and you're on the battlefield. It's just that if you know you screw up, they don't die, or you don't. That's die. a good thing. Yes, uh, absolutely. Yeah. But naked and afraid, yeah. you just yeah. might die. Yeah, I was gonna say. <laughs> I mean, that is why I will. They could get eaten by lions. I mean, nope. it's Africa. I'll stay in post, thank you very much. I want to live. You know what all is also interesting is um our our doesn't our like somewhere down the line, aren't we related to the person that wrote the Star Spangled Banner? And just having that like in the back. John Philip Sousa. Yeah, like relative. You would think that that alone would give me some confidence. Because I'm a singer. Are you I like yeah. Yeah. What the heck? That's like weird. I should be using don't casually that. drop that. That's like I don't know. That's oh, like historical. My... <laughs> that's cool. 
uh, John Phillips is his long, 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 yeah. long, 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 long relative. Uh, she makes music too. You know, it's not about you know the saving the world or anything, but she's terrified to That's sing, cool. so it just doesn't make any sense. Like, what is that? It's weird. You think as a human, knowing that the blood that was in that person, there's a trickle of it in me. Like, they well, there's a trickle of Jesus in you too. I mean, if you want to go further back, all we are is stardust. I mean, stardust. everybody, we are. We're, you know, the very, when we look out our eye to see the sun, our eye is part of the sun at one time. I mean, we're just space dust. I forget who, who said that, but that's what we're made up of. And, it. you know, it. so it's just how far you want to take it. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. we're, I, I remember somebody one time told me that, you know, it's been 2,000 years since Jesus was alive. We're actually, every time we take a breath, we get some of the molecules that he breathed. That's you know, even though it was a neat, you know. Just all all in thing. all is all we all are, right, Nirvana? Is yeah. part of one but of it's, hard to, it's hard to motivate yourself. That's the big, on the big picture, when yeah. you got the deadline or when you've got a great book that Rebecca won't finish because she's procrastinating. Don't call me out. And sets it and well, doesn't listen to me, you know. Procrastination stage. We start motivate with the children's book first. Easier. She she oh, is. You an think amazing, that's what I thought? Oh my god, it's is easy. This girl is an amazing writer, Joe. The first time I read some of her stuff, I was like, oh my god. I mean, it's a little dark, but you know, hey, that. that's what sells. And her yeah. art is just as dark. It's so great. Oh, oh yeah. so good. Oh, Thank shucks. you, guys. Chucks. Oh, chucks. Yeah. Well, uh, here's another another. Getting rule. pretty inspired from this. Uh, here's another Jordan chucks. Peterson rule, which is kind of <laughs> yeah. our hero, which is always make sure your friends support your successes. Because you know, yeah. there's a lot of people out there that are envious of your successes. And, you know, they'll say, and that's what I like the entourage, because these guys do not... Well, some of them support their successes, but most of it is their jealousy, you know. And, it is, it is and those people you don't want in your <laughs> life. You know, I, I had to get rid of a longtime friend. Cut them out. A long time to realize everything I did good. Like one time I was, give you an example, I was writing, a, a friend of mine had did a, a, an off-Broadway play. So I wanted to write a play. And I had, and so my friend was there. And he said, "What are you doing?" I said, "Well, I'm writing a Broadway play." Well, I meant I'm writing a, you know, a play that's kind of like a Broadway type play. And he went like, "Broadway play," you know. It was just that little bit of you yeah. are writing a broad, you know. And it was just yeah. like I never realized anything I did. This guy would try to would throw a little turd, would drop a turd in my punch bowl, mm -hmm. and walk away. Well. You don't want those people in your life. Life is way too short, especially in the business that you're, you know, you're in a business and oh, yeah. um, my God, they can sabotage you as you probably. Frenemies, well. frenemies left and right. I tell frenemies. you what. Did that, ever, that comment, did that comment ever um, prevent you from writing that play? Did you, did you? Yeah, it did. You took it to it heart, stopped, right? It stopped me. Because I thought, you know, he's right. What the fuck do I think I'm writing a play? It stopped me. You're right. It did. I, you know, it's still in my computer somewhere. But I, I, I went like, yeah, it's probably right. But you know, I have no right to write a Broadway play. Well, somebody wrote the freaking Broadway play. Neil Simon yeah. wrote a couple of them. Yeah. You know, you know, Who's sometimes this person? I'll go there and I'll kick his butt. You know who the person is. I do. I won't say his name. I feel like when you have those moments, it's the universe telling you actually should be. You know, it's it's putting that conflict in front of you. And yeah. sometimes you do, it's hard because I, you know, kind of like that story. I had a little kid when I was younger that said, don't sing, you suck or something like yeah. that. So oh. I never sang for the rest of my life. You know, it, yeah. it's, these are heartbreaking moments that sometimes if you, it, you really do have to listen to to what the universe tells you and, and, and kind of go. And a lot of yeses, I, I was going to say, say about fear is like, you know, just like in improv, you're never supposed to say no. Right. Yeah. So the more yes you do, like the more involvement you get with everything in life. Like the Yes Man, that movie with Jim Carrey, yeah. where he 
can only say yes to everything. It changes. It gets you into trouble a lot of times. There is times where you do do yeah. need to say no. It's interesting yeah. you picked up on that. I didn't finish that play. No one's ever. I've told that story before. Nobody ever picked up on it. But yeah. Kristen and I. This is before I was so enlightened and smart. Kristen, <laughs> Kristen and I have this rule. We don't tell anybody what we're working on until it's done. Or at it's least hard. It's, it's really at least hard. It's, that's a really good rule because really as soon as you tell people, then all the outside influences come in on it and it can crush it before it even grows. What if they said, like I told you, oh, Rebecca, this is great. Well, maybe I shouldn't have said that because what happens is you can get the reward of finishing it with, by somebody going, wow, this is mm -hmm. really good. You go, okay. And you're like, oh, mission accomplished. Mission accomplished. I'm on to but, the next thing. I don't have to finish it. Because it, then it's like you're telling people not to compliment you. And it's like, but that's yeah. kind of true, though, because everybody, whenever I show anybody anything I'm doing, they're always like, oh, my God, this is so great. And it's like, I feel so good about that. But it, now it's like, now I could put this aside and start another project because my greatness mm -hmm. has already been realized by yeah. all the people that? I care about the opinions of. Is so. that a form of suffering in itself? Oh, yeah. Your work yeah. didn't, you didn't the put that sword. effort into to, to yeah. making it better. If someone told you it was crap, maybe you would, or or then you or suffer maybe. by not finishing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm guilty of both. And then so you I like that never philosophy. accomplish anything, and then you feel like, I don't know, all this other. It's almost problem. like you have to trick yourself. Like you're not well, doing something. No, I, I don't. Think I feel like you've got to conquer not, it, though. I feel like yourself. even you're, if that happens, you have to get through it, or you won't do anything. Because well, if somebody a, says, says something bad, or somebody says something too good, if you let those things take your ideas down with you, then you won't get anything done. Well, Unless you don't way, tell people. Them. Sorry, go on. Well, here's the way. Um, sorry to interrupt you, but I wanted to get this in quickly. But yeah, it's, you got to stay conscious. It's when you're unconscious. And so I was unconscious when that guy said that to me or when I was also told when I was a little kid something about singing, so I never sang it. I was unconscious. Yeah. When you stay conscious and you're aware of things, then that then you'll go, oh, I get what. This is one of those guys that tries to take everybody down. Yeah. And, yeah. Or, you know, this is this compliment. Oh, thank you for, you know, sharing, but I got to get back to work. Mm -hmm. You know, so you got to make it, a point to be conscious. You're right. I love that. I love that because there definitely is a difference between you being ready to receive something and somebody just telling you offhandedly. Like mm -hmm. it, it's like a totally different ballpark. I really like that actually. I feel like that's how that's the cure. That's a really like, simple solution. If you're gonna show somebody be ready yeah. for whatever they're gonna say. And, and is it easy? Is no, it easy to be conscious. No, because <laughs> your brain constantly freaking... wants to flash back to those traumatic moments of don't do this. Remember what happened last time. You'll be shamed. So if you're yeah. conscious, you're not able to flash back in those memories because you're present. You're here right now listening to what's happening instead of it's called playing those old memories of shame and, and it's called pat you're a victim of what's called past presence. Mm -hmm. So in our head. And this can be like somebody could just look at you a certain way and then clink, you go back to a past event. It's a survival like, mode. Like okay. something that, you know, I still relive this one tackle that I missed in junior college where the guy went around and they won the game. I can't, I wasn't able to get past it. And there would every time I'd watch a football game, I would be reminded about or blah, blah, blah. And so I couldn't even tell people I even played football. You know, I just, it was so hard. Well, I would... I was literally unconscious. And when you're unconscious, you go into a trance. And one of the things that we talk about on the podcast is shame and the shame trance. So you go into a trance about all of this shameful events that happen. Well, you're totally unaware of it. It happens in a, in a millisecond. So it's, it's a struggle to constantly bring yourself back to be, oh, I'm awake. You know, just, oh, I'm conscious of this. I'm be working. here now. Yeah, be, be here now. Trying to be here now isn't the easiest thing in the world. Meditating is so hard. That's the same thing for yeah. me. Yeah, well, meditating is a great way to get back. And you know what fishing is for me? Mm -hmm. Meditating. Mm -hmm. I meditate. When you're out and you're fishing, it's a meditation. The whole process of it, for, for me anyway, is is a meditation. Not the, com the competition part, but just yeah. the act of fishing. Are you making a face? Because you're like, but my fishing is so... It's, it's, it, it, it's I a power lot. through fishing. 
that's how it was, I think, initially, you know, for me, it was that now it's a whole different world. Um, it's, a, it's not as meditative. So I do, I do my yoga. Yoga is yeah. really meditative. Yoga. You do. Like, you know, that, right before. Roller skating is very meditative. Yes, I, I would have to agree. And just I don't know it. about roller skating. That sounds like, unless you were somewhere where it was really open. I don't know. I guess I'm the biking and doing all that on streets. So it's like, you don't want cars to hit you. So there's that anxiety. You're always watchful. Mm. Um, well, the med just pure meditation, meditating the right way is incredibly difficult for, for the hunter brain, for somebody who needs lots of stimulation. I sit there and I would, I feel like, you know, yeah. I'm on like, cocaine ah, ah, grinding my teeth i gotta get through this how long am i supposed 15 minutes my god it's been 30 seconds you know there's an alternative to that that jordan peterson says where you could do the same thing but you write it all down because he says writing oh, yeah. is an extension of thinking or something like that like yeah. it's but more coherent so if you write down every sense. single last thing in your head you have a conversation with yourself and like that's like the equivalent. I feel like that's kind of better for us because we're so hyperactive. And meditating really does feel like either you're going to take a nap or you're like, oh, God, every minute that's going by and I have to sit here and breathe deeply. <laughs> Instead of the you know I'd rather dance to good yeah. music around the house with all the lights off and no one home. Yeah, that's dancing. Favorite. That's great. Ooh. With all the lights off. Talk about be here now. If you want to do good dance moves, you got to be here now, you know, and not be thinking about what Sally's thinking about you while you're dancing so get, get out of here sally you just do it like me on, on the skates and i start dancing i do it in public i will you sit in the middle of the grocery skate. store and start getting down with my ear pods I, I like i you know i think it's fun just to break out and dance wherever you can which was very funny because like i didn't like musicals when i was younger because they would they you know like west side story they're about to get in a fight now we're gonna sing about it, it, was, it yeah. was always always weird about that but now yeah i'd bust out a song and dance before <laughs> fight. i think it's cool i challenge you to a dance off but you're you're in that glee era you know the uh, yeah. i'll snap my way out of this fight yeah, yeah. it's like what what <laughs> nobody fights like throw a pot except on the dance floor get yeah. him in the we do on the dance floor. Yeah. Dance offs, dance medals. Well, unless you're M &M. So competitive fishing, dance <laughs> in public. I mean, where are your relaxing activities we're looking for? I thought these were for me. <laughs> I, mean, I, I guess compared to what you usually do, that's fair. Yeah. For Jill, uh, that's relaxing. Oh, uh, so out of my comfort zone, though. I can't imagine. You notice it's gotten that's darker. Cool. It has. Yeah. I, I feel like I'm fading into You're in the, the like a cave. I'm fading into my painting. Oh my I'm, God. Help me, help me. Well, it is about that time. I mean, yeah. we've covered a lot of good stuff. Well, we've covered a lot. Yeah. You know? I think we've hit the main And the main Joe, you, yeah. you brought up some great points. It was yeah. very, you know, thank you. It's This is very hard to have three creative people and try to be quiet. I can't do it, you know. Oh, speaking of that, I came up with a trick, a solution for that. Okay. Is, of course, I don't have it with me now. Keep a piece of paper or a notepad and with a true. pen. And if something right. comes up, write down what you're thinking so, you, so it doesn't go away. Yeah. But that way you're not waiting yeah, for the other person go. to shut up. You no, know? I've got pads See, Joe's too. got it. Joe's got it. I I said, no, you can write it down on your phone. I use it on my phone. phone. Too, but it's really helped because especially if we have all four cameras up people can tell if you're waiting for everyone to shut up so you can talk like i don't know maybe i'm just the only one that can tell i can't i can't tell really. i gotta write them down otherwise like many of you my thoughts will come they'll be genius but if i don't say them when i think of them i'll forget them and then i'll be like damn it what was i gonna say fuck it oh well we'll just move on Whenever so, that happens to me, I just consider it as the universe telling me, maybe I shouldn't say that right now. Maybe it's not the time for that thought. I like to battle with yeah. the universe, and I like yeah. to write it down and try and bring it back. And then the more you do that, the practice, 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 holding on to those insights that come to you, um, the easier it is. You know, there's that. re say them out loud uh, with the same intensity. There's and, a story There's a story that, that um, Elizabeth Galbraith tells about um, you know the woman that wrote eat, pay, eat pray love and she was talking about this 
you know, when ideas show up or when things come into your brain. She was telling the story about this um, po poet laureate who she grew this woman and I forget what her name is, but she grew up in the in in Kansas out in the plains, and she would he literally hear a poem coming across the plains, and it would get bigger and bigger. And she would turn and if she didn't have a pen and paper, and run back to her house to I write turn. down. Yeah. And sometimes it would go on and miss her. And one mm -hmm. time she just got to her house and grabbed a pen with one hand and grabbed the poet, the poem uh, with the other and wrote it down perfectly intact, but backwards. In reverse. That's insanity. But I get it. I totally get it. Like yeah. if I'm driving and I think of a song, I'm like, fuck, can you please come back when I'm not in a death situation? <laughs> Or I'll find drives. my phone. Anytime Kristen phone. drives, it's a death situation. Was, I got to pay attention. I got to be here now for the road. Has yeah. it ever happened to you guys, too, where you're thinking of something really, like a really good idea? If you try to write it down while you're still in the process of stewing it up in your brain, then the other half of it, like you get the first half beautifully, and then the other half of it gets cut off because you didn't like it. Because you're finish. editing while you're writing. You're editing while you're writing. That's why I prefer the voice memo. I just click record. Yeah. A million voice are, memos. <laughs> I oh, love that. I yeah. Billions. When I was a real estate billions. developer. My notes on my phone are just like that. I have a billion of them. In the, in the past life, I was a real estate developer. And so I had all these projects going. And I had about six too. banks that I was working with. And I would have to remember, I was kind of like a Donald Trump. So I had to remember what I told this one and what I told that one and what I told the other one. And I was oh, literally liar. used to carry around two of those mini cassette recorders to record oh, yeah. what I'd said to this person and what I said to that person. So Only recording. I, I've made it my practice to quit lying because I would literally couldn't remember what, here's the thing about when you lie. When you lie, you gotta write it down because you'll forget, you'll get mixed up. When you tell the truth, I don't have to remember anything. So that's Except why the I truth. Yeah. tell the yeah. truth. Yeah. Even when it hurts sometimes people I tell it. So, so I I think we've gotten a lot of helpful tips on the those are like helpful four tip. tips. Like voice yeah. memos, writing stuff down, keeping it simple. My camouflage as it gets darker. Trying it. Like Joe said, just do it. If you're afraid, mm -hmm. do it. And baby steps it and um, eventually it won't be as hard. What's the worst that can happen? Yeah. Yeah. There's We've already not, got shame. Like, come on, let's just say a little bit more. Not, there's, you go up to somebody and say, hi, what's the worst thing that happened? Or they say, ew. Yeah. No. Like, it's, okay. it's like, it doesn't matter. Or you go to your, like, you do something your way. It might be wrong, big deal, but you did it. You it's took, right. you made a decision. You made a conscious decision to do what you wanted to do. Okay, well, then I'm going <clears> to, <throat> I'm going to step out here and ask Joe. If you've got a job for an older guy that's a writer who could also do, you know, a little jungle uh, protection. Well, unfortunately, um, I am moving on from Naked and Afraid. And uh, I want to start a uh, show with cars. And, and, and Well, that's even better. I drive cars. But see, I, I did that for a point. I, I'm not attached to the outcome of it. I just wanted to use that example. But you never know. I mean, some of my biggest gigs, I just literally said something like that, and then the person went like, "Well, I don't have this, but yeah. could you write you an article this. about the finance thing?" And go, yeah, sure, boom. So you, you never know. To, can you write my manuals? I just tell you how to and just put them together. Life is like a yeah. box of chocolates. You never know what you're yeah. gonna get, and from where. What, what, oh, who? Let's thank Joe and wrap this thing up. Yeah, thank poor Joe. Joe, you must be hungry. I heard you just got off work. Forget Probably Joe's hungry, dinner. I'm hungry. Yeah. My mom just called with dinner too. They're like, guys, Jenna. Yeah. Thank well, you for thanks. having me. I, it was great to have these conversations. And I had no idea what I was getting into and you just yeah. adapt and-, and You're so brave. Things. Yeah. Thank you for being I great. I hope we didn't scare He's you. He's the brave one. That one's a brave one, I'll tell you, Chris. That one's a brave one. Brave. Land of the brave. It's a good one, that that egg. He's a yeah, good egg. egg. We'll have you back on you. if that's okay with you at some point. We'll have you back. Check on your your trike night uh champion status later. Yeah. That comes back. 
All right, okay. since Chad and Rebecca are slowly disappearing into the darkness. Bye. Bye. You're excused. Cause you're always late of waiting totally rude, honey.